Good morning children. Today we shall learn more about plant reproduction. Now we know what is sexual reproduction in the plants. In the sexual reproduction, the male and female gamete participate and the zygote is formed after the fusion of male and female gametes which is called fertilization. Then the zygote changes into an embryo and then the embryo changes into a baby plant under the right conditions. Now the question is how do plants which do not flower or don't have seeds reproduce? Well you know there are other ways too by which plants reproduce and these don't involve the male or the female gametes. Let us see what are these. So the plants can reproduce without the seeds too. Sometimes a part of a plant can grow into a new plant like in the case of few microscopic organisms like the yeast, hydra, etc. A small pulp like bud is formed then it grows and gets separated from the parent once it becomes mature. Thus an independent organism is formed. It is very simple and an interesting process. Hydra can have many buds at a time. This type of reproduction is called budding. Spirogyra is one kind of algae which looks like small green string. It floats on the surface of ponds or in the dirty drains. These adult organisms just break into two or more pieces and each piece grows into a new plant. Not only in Spirogyra, in many other plants, the adult plant breaks up into several pieces of fragments and each piece grows into an independent plant. Such type of reproduction is called fragmentation. In ferns and mosses etc. flowers are not there so the seed cannot be formed. Instead their reproductive bodies are the spores which are mostly spherical in shape and protected by thick wall. A spore can be single celled or multi celled. In moss the spore case bursts and the spore is released into the air. Many fungi also reproduce through the spores. When the environment conditions are right, the spores germinate. That is, the spore bursts out of thick wall and the cell starts multiplying and the spore grows into a new plant. All of these methods, the budding method, fragmentation method and the spore formation method which involve simple division of plant body into two or more parts or the spore formation are called the asexual reproduction methods. Let us see another method of asexual reproduction in the plants. You know in some plants the vegetative parts such as the root, stem, leaf etc. can be used to reproduce new plants and this is called vegetative reproduction. Since it does not involve the male or the female gametes, it is also a type of asexual reproduction. In some plants, the roots help in reproduction like the roots of dahlia, asparagus can develop into new plants. The dahlia plants store the excess food in the secondary roots and these get swollen. These are called tuberous roots. Sometimes the plant shoot dies but the tubers remain in the ground. Then the new shoot may grow back from the tuber helping in the multiplication of the plant. So the roots help in the plant reproduction. We already know about the underground stems which store food like the potato, ginger, onion etc. The new plant may grow from the specific part of these kind of stems like the potato has a small bud on its eye. Cut a potato piece with an eye and put it under the soil. If the conditions are favorable, a new plant would grow from it. Ginger is a rhizome which is a stem that grows horizontally underground 
and stores food it has buds on it too from these buds new plants may grow onion is a bulb the bulb is an underground storage organ made of stem and leaves the bulb is made of many layers of fleshy scales which are actually leaves and the center of bulb contains a bud this bud can grow into a new plant certain plants reproduce through the leaves for example the bryophyllum leaves develop small buds on their margin these buds grow into new plants when the leaves fall from the parent plant as we saw many plants generally the seedless plants use the vegetative method through their roots stem or the leaf etc naturally to produce the new plants so these were the natural methods of vegetative reproduction you know we humans also use the artificial methods involving the vegetative reproduction of plants to grow new plants for example we cut a part of rose stem and place it in the moist soil sometimes later the roots come out of it and it grows into a new plant this artificial way of vegetative reproduction is called cutting this cutting method can be used in case of sugarcane hibiscus bougainvillea too in grape plant jasmine plant a young branch is lowered down the ground and then it is covered with a layer of soil after some times roots grow from it when the branch is cut off from the parent plant it becomes an independent plant this artificial way of vegetative reproduction is called layering have you ever thought how do we get the newer and better varieties of plants especially the newer varieties of fruit plants and the ornamental plants well it is again through an artificial method of vegetative reproduction called grafting in this technique the branches of different plants are organically joined the shoot which is transferred is the scion and the plant with the roots to which the scion is attached is called the stalk hence the stalk provides the water and the minerals to the scion with time new cells develop in the area where they are joined and a new variety of plant develops so this was the grafting method so to summarize what we learned till now there are different ways through which the plants reproduce and they can be broadly categorized as the sexual reproduction which involves the fusion of male and female gametes leading to the formation of zygote out of which the new plant is formed and the other methods which don't involve the male and the female gametes are the asexual reproduction methods the asexual reproduction can be further classified as the budding method in which buds develop into new plants fragmentation method in which plant fragments into two or more pieces and each piece grows into a new plant spore formation method in which the spores germinate to form new plants and lastly the vegetative reproduction which involves a part of plant organ for example the root leaf etc grow into a new plant and also remember the vegetative reproduction may be natural through the root stem leaf etc or can be done artificially by the humans using the layering cutting or the grafting method to get newer variety or the better variety of plants so that was all about the plant reproduction bye bye children